Hello and welcome to the USA Volleyball Show, the official podcast of USA Volleyball. I'm Stephen Munson and nope, no Clarence Hughes today. He is resting from the his tiring event season, but we have guest host and producer Curtis Ward. Curtis, how are you doing today? Doing very well. Doing well now that uh, we have one more event for the summer for myself and then We'll have a short break to catch up on some sleep. <laughs> yeah, we can sleep in in August or, or sleep in September whenever we whenever we can. We'll, we'll That's just my sleep. hibernation month. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Well, you just got back from Boys uh, in Salt Lake City. Tell me about how that event went for you. It was great. Uh, honestly, there's so many great teams and athletes competing. Uh, we had 2008 Olympic gold medalist Ryan Millar. Uh, who was there, he was doing a meet and greet, he was awarding medals. And how cool would that be to have an Olympian, just or a gold medalist, I should say, awarding you your medal? I, yeah, I'm that's so cool. Uh, that's so cool. I'm glad we were able to have Ryan out for that. Yeah, I caught, I caught Ryan even giving a few minor instructions to some of the people do, during the meet and greet right at the USA Volleyball booth, so that was, that was super fun. Uh, I saw that. That was really cool. Yeah, the they're just sitting there talking shop. Uh, that was yep. that was really cool. Yeah, and also um, Team Travel Source awarded their College Bound and Proud Scholarship to Om Patel of Long Island Fury. So that was super fun to kind of. I made a little video about him, just getting to know him a little bit, and such an incredible person. So go check out that video on usavolleyball.org. That's awesome. But also, yeah. finally, just a big congrats to all of the teams that competed. Um, yeah, championship days were filled with such high-level volleyball. Can't wait for next year in Dallas. Yep, Dallas. Good place, I hear. <laughs> well, and that's where you're at right now, too. At it? That's exactly right. Yeah, I'm here in Arlington for the for the women's BNL finals, the Volleyball Nations League final round. Uh, the team just had practice today and, and they'll be starting the quarterfinals tomorrow, uh, against Japan. So that's going to be a lot of fun. But, uh, yeah, I was actually last week was at girls, uh, nationals in Chicago, girls, 14s and 17s. And that was a lot of fun. They split the events and somehow it seems even bigger than ever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't know that was possible, <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was a lot of, a lot of great volleyball, a lot of fun, um, just moments and highlights that I was able to capture and see. And, and we also had an Olympian there, Olympic gold medalist, Jordan Poulter there to, to hand out some awards to the 14s and 15s divisions. That was a lot of fun. And again, you could just kind of see their face light up as they, as they saw Jordan kind of entering the awards area and, uh, we had Ken Corum on the mic kind of announcing her uh, coming up to to give out awards. And that was, yeah, that was just a lot of fun. And then, of course, uh, all the athletes coming to the USA Volleyball booth to talk to her and get photos and autographs and a lot of excited parents as well who uh, didn't have their kids with them, but were just just as excited to to meet Jordan. So that was a lot of fun. And thank you to Jordan for, for coming out and doing that. But um, yeah. I, I'm here in Arlington right now for for women's BNL and it's it's going to be a lot of fun. I've I've never uh, been to a BNL finals and uh, we're here at University of Texas Arlington. Uh, they're going to be playing in the College Park Center Arena, and they just finished putting together the arena today, and it looks incredible. So and I hear ticket sales are going great. Um, so it's going to be a lot. Of, I think it holds five thousand. Uh, last I heard, we were up to thirty five. 3,500 and that's not including the walk-ups. Uh, so, uh, it's going to be a packed house and I'm excited to see it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Even though I can't make it there in person, like you, I'll be watching from home. I'm super excited to, to watch the women's team. That's going to be cool. Where, where are you off to next? I'll be headed to Fort Lauderdale on Sunday for the beach national championship. So that's that'll cool. see also a lot of fun. You pack your pack your bucket hat, pack your your sunscreen. <laughs> I've got the SPF 100, the bucket hat, the shades. I'll be good protecting the sun. <laughs> we need to hire someone with an umbrella just to kind of follow you around. <laughs> oh, that would be that would be ideal. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, uh, yeah, great to hear that the event season is going well, and um, had two nationals go finish up, and and great. And you were at. Uh, girls uh 11s 13s just before that in, in your home state uh in minnesota 
um, quickly. Was that was that great? Or that how's that been too. for you? Yeah, like you said, I mean, splitting it, it was a huge event, and I mean, that was like your you're... first time at a at a girls, right? That was, was my first. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think my ears are still ringing from all the whistles blowing and stuff, but that'll that'll you know settle down over time. So, <laughs> yeah, really, really great um, opportunity and. Um, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun to be back in Minneapolis and, and they put on a great show at the convention center there. So yeah, it was a great, great event. Cool. Well, we'll have to check in with you after beach championships finishes up. Uh, love to hear about how, how that goes. Definitely. Well, moving on with our episode, uh, if you haven't listened to our previous episode, we talked to us men's national team outside hitter, Cody Kessel. Cody talks about uh, where the squad is at right now as they compete in the Volleyball Nations League. We also congratulate him on his recent engagement to his fiance Nina. He chats about his background, how he was introduced to the game, what it means to wear the USA jersey, and so much more. You can listen to that podcast right now on your favorite podcast platform, or you can watch it on the USA Volleyball YouTube channel. Now, moving on to news with Munson, no, doesn't <laughs> doesn't have the same ring to it. <laughs> News with Hughes, substitute myself in. We have, thank you, thank you to everyone who attended the 2023 Girls 1417s Junior National Championship in Chicago. Thank you to everyone who attended the 2023 Boys Junior National Championship in Salt Lake City as well. Both were great events as we kind of recap those just now. And we'll see you, like Curtis said, we'll see you in Dallas next year for BJNC and GJNC 11 through 13s will be in. Oh, no, that's also in Dallas. That's news to me as well. Awesome. Boys and GJNC 11 13s in Dallas. And then Las Vegas will be the host city for GJNC 14s through 17s. Back to back events in Dallas. That's going to be fun. Congratulations to the U.S. women's sitting team for winning the Dutch tournament in Assen, Netherlands, and defending their title there. Uh, the U.S. men's sitting national team also found success, success by securing a third-place finish and doubling their win total from last year's tournament. Congratulations to three U.S. beach pairs. First up, Andy Banesh and Miles Partain for bringing home the gold at the Elite 16 in Stad, and then Sarah Hughes and Kelly Chang ended up taking home the silver, and then Kristen Nuss and Taryn Cloth brought home the bronze medal. The U.S. men's national team just finished up Volleyball Nations League Week 3 from California. The team will be competing in the BNL Finals next week in Poland. They will be taking on the Olympic gold medalist team France and the quarterfinals first up big match that's gonna be a lot of fun you can watch that match on volleyballworld.tv watch the U.S. women's national team take on the world's best volleyball athletes in person and on home soil watch the women's finals in Arlington Texas today July 12th through July 16th buy your last minute tickets right now uh, for Arlington. For more on all the latest news, you can visit usavolleyball.org. Now, on to today's show. We have 1992 Olympic bronze medalist and USA Volleyball Hall of Famer Leanne Sato. Leanne is a former member of the U.S. Women's National Team at the 88 and 92 Olympic Games. Had a lot of fun talking to, to Leanne. We, we talked to her about her background. Of course, the Sato family is the most, if if not the most, one of the most uh, known, well-known volleyball families uh, in the sport. Uh, we talk to her about growing up in and around the game, playing with her brothers, uh, competing uh, for, for USA Volleyball, playing professionally on the beach as well, and so much more. Had a lot of fun conversation with her. Uh, but let's just jump right in. Here's Leanne. Well, thank you again for for sitting down and, and taking time and, and hanging out at school uh, yeah. where you work to to get that good Wi-Fi. But uh, yeah, uh, really, really quick, wanted to um, 
kind of you just got back from the or you were just at the men's national team uh, or the men's BNL. And they did a whole fun introduction of some alumni on the court. Can you just tell us a, tell us a little bit about that experience being there? Um, sure. It was it was an amazing amazing time for us. It's really nice to uh, be recognized for representing the United States. But getting invited to the receptions before the games is really special for us, and it's really nice to see everybody. And uh, we we really appreciate all the invitations that we get for the receptions and then actually being introduced in the middle of the the matches. That was super awesome, especially because I get to hang out with uh, former friends, not former, but friends and former Olympians. And um, some Rudy Sawara was one of my coaches Oh, cool! at San Diego State. And then hanging out with Kim Odin was super awesome. So it's really always fun. Yeah, speaking of another big volleyball family, the Odin, the Odins, oh. uh, very, yeah. very prestigious volleyball family. That's so oh, cool yeah. to be, to be a fly on the wall for some of those conversations, just with oh. all the alumni and just hearing all the stories. I bet was just was really cool, and, and I'm, I'm happy you got to uh, experience that and and kind of kind of a reunion of sorts uh, uh, there at the BNL. Oh yeah, it's always so much fun, and it was it was such a nice setup at the reception and then walk us over to the game and had some fantastic seats and just watching the USA men's team play was phenomenal. It was super fun. It was really fun. So thank that's, you for that. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm glad that that, that worked out and, and we had such a, a big attendance uh, for oh. those events too. I watched one of the matches. I uh, was able to watch one of the matches uh, on TV and you could just hear the 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 fans and the energy. You could just feel it through the TV. It was a lot of fun. It was the the 43-41 uh, oh third goodness. set one. <laughs> I heard about that one. Everybody was talking about that. They said yeah. it was a marathon. Against Argentina, yep. yep. Yeah. Oh my well, that's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm glad you had a good time, and, and hopefully we can continue to do more events like that and having our alumni out uh, and working with, with all the alumni to – to just celebrate volleyball and celebrate the history of USA Volleyball, I think it's very important. Oh, yeah. I agree. I agree. We'll kind of kick things off here. Um, we, you know, said at the top, I mentioned at the top, the Sato family is, if 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 not the biggest, one of the biggest volleyball families in, in volleyball. And I'm um, really excited to have you on and kind of talk about that and, and dive into that a little bit, but would love to kind of start off with just you know, what was your journey in volleyball? Tell, tell me a little bit about your volleyball journey. Well, it really started uh, just growing up in Santa Monica. We uh, we had six kids, of course, right? Four boys, two girls. And uh, my mom didn't want us in the house. So she said, get outside and play, you know, go run around and goof off. So we would go down to Ocean Park Beach Volleyball. They had two volleyball courts there. Now there's probably 40. And uh, we play volleyball all day on the beach or we go down to Santa Monica Pier. They had a bunch of courts down there. We play all day down there. It was free. All you needed was a volleyball. And uh, we'd walk down there every day. And then after that, we'd go to play open gym at either Memorial Park or John Adams Middle School or John Adams Junior High School. We called it back then. And um, we would just play, play, play. And then my oldest brother, Gary, started playing volleyball. At, uh, at SMC. So we would all go watch him play. And then he went to Santa Barbara UCSB. So then we'd all pack ourselves in a van and drive up there and watch him play. And so he kind of, he started the ball rolling for us to just follow along. And, and it was just a fun sport, you know, something that we could do together. It was something that we could do with our friends and, um, and it was low cost. It was free at the beach. So that was super fun. And then the open gyms were uh, were super fun also and free. So it was good. I just got a fun visual in my head of the Sato van pulling up to to the gyms and everything and all your kids just running out with just the volleyball. <laughs> yeah. Oh, to, oh man, those were the days. So much fun driving up to Santa Barbara, yeah. running around the gyms. Yeah. So it was fun. They had Rob Jim. It was super fun. That's cool. For yeah. for you know, for fans, USA fans, fans of you, what what's something 
that they might not know about you, like a hidden talent or just like a, a passion or interest that, that you have, something that fans might not know about you? Uh, well, let's see. I thought about that and I don't really have any hidden talents, but um, I used to be a mean rollerblader. Oh, my, cool. Yeah. My friend and I, Jen Meredith Castillo now is her married name. We would rollerblade from Santa Monica all the way down to Manhattan Beach nonstop, down the bike path, wow. through the streets, through the alleys, and see how fast we could do it. And it was hilarious. It was hysterical. We were just talking about it the other day. Her daughter was playing at the USA Beach uh, tournament down there. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, we were just revisiting all our crazy stories on our rollerblades. And uh, that, that's about it. I was a me. We were good rollerbladers. And uh, I like hogging ice cream like nobody's business. Oh, what's the go-to flavor? Um, vanilla Swiss almond, of oh, wow. course. That sounds good. Yep, yep. That's it. Pint That's awesome. Pint. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you ever dust off the the blades at all? Still, Actually, I did about yeah. a year ago, last summer, or maybe two summers ago. I took the trek, not as fast as I possibly could. From Santa Monica all the way down to Manhattan Beach. I needed wow. a ride back, but uh, uh, I did it, and it was amazing. It's such a it's such a cool ride. Just cruising down there along the bike path. It was fun, really fun. Making a note for our for our videographer who's in in California oh. to to <laughs> get some rollerblades of his own, Severin, to get some oh, yeah. rollerblades of his own and rollerblade and interview you while doing it. That'd oh, be a lot of oh. fun. Let's do Laura, it. take me about that. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. Oh, that's so fun. That would be really cool. That would be really cool. Well, kind of, kind of getting into your volleyball career a little bit, and and I'd like to kick things off with just kind of a fun question here. Did you have any, um, like pre match rituals or superstitions, um, you know, as you entered the arena or maybe as you like got back to serve, anything like that? Uh, you know, I can't really remember any specific rituals. I just remember. Uh, I always wanted to just, I mean, as hopefully every athlete does make sure they have all their equipment, their shoes. I mean, that was something that you, you desperately needed and all your uniforms and warm ups and, uh, but not any particular ritual or superstitions that I had. I just was super OCD about, um, making sure I had everything and being super overly prepared. That's about it. Nothing fancy. Did you did you have any um like go to meals or anything any fun snacks that you had to have maybe like close by on the bench or anything like that? <laughs> uh, no, we we usually just ate whatever the team served us, and yeah. that was it. Yeah, we weren't very keep it easy yeah. or picky. Yeah, just keep it easy. Whatever the hotel or team served us, we ate it. Yeah, I love we that. were. Yeah, uh, I'm kind. Of, I'm gonna kind of backtrack a little bit here because okay. you mentioned you're at the USA Volleyball Beach event in Hermosa. What sort of like feelings or emotions that do you get going to junior and youth events now as, um, you know, as an alumni of USA Volleyball? What sort of thoughts kind of go through your head? You know, do you have flashbacks, anything like that? I, I just think it's incredible how giant it is now. I mean, there were courts upon courts upon courts and eight, all the different ages um, it's just incredible how much it's grown. 12 and under, 14 under, 16 under. I I can't remember if they ever had that when I played. I think it was just you signed up for a tournament and you played against everybody and their grandma. But uh, <laughs> yeah, seriously. So um, yeah, I don't remember any of the age groups back then, but it was it's just amazing. The setup is amazing. The courts look fantastic. They're lined up. They have their sponsorships and Tons of girls are playing. Tons of boys are playing it. And right next to the professionals, right next to the AVP professional teams. And it was, it's amazing. Are you it's coaching awesome. the club as well? No, I, no. I just coach at the high school. Yeah. Okay. I just rode down to go watch and meet some friends and watch their daughters play and hang out. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Enjoy the sand. Enjoy the beach, the sun. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. 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 That's awesome. Well, um, I guess kind of going into your career a little bit more, you know, aside from, of course, winning the bronze medal, which I'm sure is high up your list of favorite memories and highlights, but 
Is there anything that that you always think about or always comes into your head whenever you kind of reflect on your Olympic experience? The most memorable, and I, I get a little um, emotional, not that emo- emotional about it, is walking into the opening ceremonies with uh, Gary and Eric. Oh, that cool. will always be the my most favorite memory of of all time because they said well the men have to walk up here and then the, the women are walking you know we they were trying to make everybody walk separately and we thought forget that noise i was like this is the only time we're going to be in the olympics we're walking in together so i i think i kind of hung back with the men's team walk and we kind of walk in between together and it was just incredible it was amazing and then we were trying to find our parents and family in the stands but um yeah, so that that was probably my most favorite memory. My second one is actually having my family there, my mom and dad and my brothers. So that was, oh, and plus two of them were already there playing. And then my other brothers got to go because they had, um, at that time, they had um, some Seagrams and Seven and AT&T had some, um, a program that um, for every athlete that was going to the Olympics, you could bring a family member. So we were able to bring a couple of family members and then they had another program where um, you they could uh, you would be able to bring another family member and they would pay for half of it. So uh, it was amazing. They had this AT&T hospitality center where you could get tickets, extra tickets. And so it was it was amazing that I mean, the best memory is walking into the opening ceremonies and then just having my uh, family there with us. Yeah, that, so that was, that's, I mean, that's incredible. Yeah, that's, yeah. I, I can only imagine that, that feeling and basically a dream come true. We just had Kabika Soji on not that long ago, and he talked a lot about having Eric there and playing, at, competing in Olympic games with Eric um, right. and just the stuff that they dreamed about growing up playing volleyball um, in Hawaii and and then realizing that dream. So I, yeah, I imagine that's the exact same for you and your brothers and, and your family as well to, oh, to yeah. witness that moment. I'd love to talk to them about that. Yeah, Their we should story. get, we should yeah, get everybody right. on. Wow. <laughs> That'd and be a lot of fun. Women, all the families. Wouldn't that be so awesome? So, oh, making a note. And the Sados. Making a note. We ha- we need a yeah. volleyball family episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There yeah. we go. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. What are some of the, I guess, what are some of the stories that you and Eric and, and Gary kind of share from, from that experience being at the Olympics together? Uh, let's see. That's a good question. We, I think we all just share the story of walking into the opening ceremonies together and being able to watch each other play. So we were able to watch, uh, each team play because we played on alternating days and different times. So it was um, just watching. I, I just have burned in my head. And plus there's a video of it of Eric jump serving for the gold medal and uh, Scott fortune hammering the overpass. Right. So cool. Yeah. So awesome. And um, I just, I remember watching Eric run up to the line and uh, usually he looks over to the bench and they give him a signal. But for that last point, he just ran up and you could see him. He took a deep breath and then he just bombs a serve and ace it in the bones, hammers it over. So we talk about that. I always bring that up because that's one of my other favorite memories. But um, they're, they're pretty low key about it. You know, they don't talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> they don't talk too much about it. But it was really a fun time with them. That's yeah, cool. Like, yeah, we we incredible. we. We just had Scott on as well, and he talked about that very same moment uh, that you just brought up. Yeah, that was the best. The two youngest guys on the team. Just that's right. Those that's those. right. Right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What a moment. What a moment yeah. in history. That's so cool. So good. So good. At the 88 games, the uh, the women's team finished seventh. Um, what what adjustments did did you and the team make? kind of and going into that next quad and and a bench that kind of took you to that next level to get that bronze medal that olympic bronze medal right i i thought about that and um i i love that question because i i didn't even i've never thought of that but i looked up the rosters because i was trying to remember it's been so long ago 
And I'm thinking, I'd, I'd have to say it was uh, the addition of Paula Weisoff, Elena Odin, and Coach Greg Giovanazzi. They were just game change. I mean, Paula, it was, it is what is incredible volleyball player she's been since high school i remember playing against her in high school and it was scary you know she was absolutely amazing and um elena odin probably one of the best middle blockers ever she's just she was awesome and then geo uh the coach he just had a had us uh thinking that we could win we had a different mindset you know we were a little bit more focused and um just thinking that we could win it all, you know? So that was, I think those are the three things, Paula, EO, and Geo. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I feel like that should be a t-shirt. <laughs> right? That's what I said. I was That's talking cool. to Elena earlier, actually, and uh, I was asking her about that because we didn't have that many, we only had four people returning, as far as I can remember, on the rosters. It was um, me, Tammy, Karen, and I think Kimo, maybe. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah. we added those two other players. But um, yeah, that was that was super fun playing with those guys. And kind of, you know, flash forward to 2021 and seeing the women's program win its first gold medal. What sort of I, I assume that you watched it. Uh, what sort of emotions did you feel in that moment? And, and were you kind of texting your 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 old teammates and and talking through the matches at all take take me through your perspective of that moment it was just unreal to see it unfold you know and and it was just an amazing group and Karch has done such an amazing job with all of these teams and players and and it's just it's unbelievable it's so cool you know so we we just thought it we just thought it was amazing amazing well deserved for those girls because they were working so hard did you and um you know your your team talk to the the those current athletes at all or, or karch talk to karch at all through the olympics or even just before heading into the games well before heading into the games they had a send-off and i think we sent a couple video clips to them i think elena yes. had yeah. arranged that right it did a, i think she did eo and um, so that was the only, really the only contact that we had, but it was just incredible. We were so excited for them. I bet that was cool for the athletes just to see, you know, everyone who came before who helped build that program to what, it, you know, to where it was or where it is now. And uh, yeah. to just to have that, cause it's just one big, feels like one big family. Everyone had a part in it. Who's been through those doors for the national team. Um, and just, yeah, like you said, just such a cool and amazing moment to realize that dream, that goal to win the program's first gold medal. And oh, um, just, incredible. you know, kind of hearing you talk about it, how you feel about this group, you know, I can only, it's going to be cool to hear the next generation kind of talk about this current group uh, yeah. as well and what they mean to to them and the program too. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, well, we, you kind of, you let us know that you're at school right now, uh, using the school Wi-Fi, gray Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah. tell them, tell me a little bit about your, your job now as a teacher, uh, at, at your alma mater, I believe, um, yeah. Santa, Santa Monica, Monica high school. school. Yeah. Yep, okay. Yep. Yeah. So I, uh, I'm a PE teacher here. I teach ninth grade PE and then I coach the girls volleyball team and I just, uh, uh, I'm coach. I coached the boys volleyball team for many years, and then now we started a beach volleyball team just um, last year, and uh, so that's it. So I gave up the boys to coach the girls beach, and so now I just uh, teach PE in the morning, and then do the girls volleyball in the afternoon for the first semester. Second semester is girls beach volleyball, so it's it's pretty busy. We're pretty busy. I was going to say, how do you have that time? <laughs> and then you got to go down to Santa Monica and rollerblade too. How do you fit, how do you fit exactly. all that in? <laughs> well, luckily I live three blocks from school and, yeah. and the beach is six blocks from school. So we just walk down to the beach for practice and um, the girls just walk down there for the last period of the day for volleyball practice. And it's so awesome. 
I love it. I'm starting to think that um, I did high school wrong. I should oh, I should have done high school in Santa Monica. <laughs> The yeah. beach, right? Right in your backyard. Oh. That's so cool. You can yeah. just walk. Good times. Miles. Oh, yeah. Well, I ride my bike and the, and the girl will walk, but it's awesome. Yeah. Super as, fun. As I'm talking to you, I apologize. The The humidity here is insane. And oh, my glasses I just started it. fogging up. <laughs> uh, what made you want to go back to your alma mater and teach and coach there? Well, it was kind of an accident, actually. Um, to just I wanted to be a PE teacher since I was in third grade. I had the most amazing PE teacher. His name is Jim Jaffe, and he's still around. And um, I just thought we'd be on in PE, running around around the the blacktop and handball and tetherball. And I thought, geez, this is like the best thing ever. You get to run around outside, goof off, play ball, do whatever you want. And I thought I'm going to be a PE teacher when I grow up. And then uh. So then I thought that, yeah, 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 I go to school, fell in a national team. And then I thought, oh, goodness, I got to get a job. And uh, so one day I'm in Santa Monica visiting my mom. She was a teacher at Santa Monica High School. And I'm walking and I run into our the athletic director at the time. His name was Mike Griswold. And he was Gary's baseball coach at Samuel High. And uh, he says, hey, I, I know you. I used to see you running around when you were five years old going, doing this and doing that. And and then I run into another lady. Her name is Eileen Hiss. She was the volleyball coach at the time. And she says, hey, I know you. Uh, I think we played against each other in college. And she said, I need a JV coach. I said, oh, no, no, no. Uh, I don't know anything about coaching. I'm ju- I just want to be a teacher. No, no, no. We need somebody. I said, okay, okay, okay. So then I started and and then that was it. I never left just got yeah. hooked from there yeah what what hooked you specifically yeah about teaching um teaching pe there at santa monica uh because i think running around and and playing sports and being active is so good for your body for your mind for the kids especially nowadays they need to run around and and socialize and it's kind of like uh it's just it's fun for kids to run around and goof off with other people. And, and in PE, you don't have to be super good at anything. You just got to put in the effort. And um, and so that's why I like it. Because the kids are running around. They're getting a break, you know, from sitting in the class all day. And it, it's just, it's good for them. And it's really important for them to know that fitness is important and activity. Not some, you know, fitness is great and being healthy. But just moving around and uh, goofing off is is good for them yeah or yeah that's 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 awesome that and i love to i love hearing that you have such a passion for it for for parents or even other pe teachers out there who who might find it difficult to you know encourage kids to get out and and exercise what how do you make that fun for kids are there any like just kind of go-to strategies that you have to to make you know physical activity fun oh yeah sometimes it's really tough but um we just kind of meet them where they're at you know we just hey do what you can do we want to see the effort we you know we want to see if you can only uh jog slow jog slow we just want you moving we want you moving and grooving that's what i tell them you know and um I mean, we have, and we have amazing facilities here at our high school. We have two gyms. We have a track. We have a state-of-the-art pool and um, outside basketball courts, football field, uh, track, and we just have everything that you could possibly do. So there's no reason why you you can't have fun and run around. You know, it's just, uh, we're not asking them to be an Olympian or to be a triathlon or an Ironman. We just want them moving and grooving and running around and then before you know it they they start liking it they're like oh yeah it's not that bad so um but it's 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 really fun the the kids find this year it was really great to see the kids develop because they just came back from remote pandemic and all that and they were all wearing masks and and they were a little bit shy and they had to relearn how to socialize and so the um as the year went on they just started relaxing more and more and Finally, we were able to take our masks off and um, 
And then the kids were like, hey, yeah, this is kind of fun because they were stuck at home for the longest time. But um, yeah, this year was was super awesome because the kids finally got, you know, were able to let loose and run around. So that's what I, that's what I really enjoyed. Yeah, I bet that was a fun uh, transition to to witness for you to see, you know, from the kids going from stuck indoors, stuck inside to oh. being able to be kids again and enjoy playing with other kids and and getting outside and, and just being yep. physically active and laughing and smiling. And yeah, getting, yep. like you said, that socialization, which is so yeah. important. Right. Yeah. So it was it was fun. It was interesting, but it was fun. You could see I, I enjoyed it because you could see the development of it, you know, throughout the semester and throughout the year. So. Well, you mentioned you live in Santa Monica. For my next time that I'm in Santa Monica, where do I got to go? What's what's the go-to restaurant or street food or or place that I got to go? I, I already know I have to rollerblade down the boardwalk, so uh, right. I'll be doing that. <laughs> All right. You got to go to Gilbert's El Indio Restaurant. Okay. It's on 24th and Pico. It's uh, a family we went to school with, and we played volleyball with their family. And they have this amazing restaurant, uh, Mexican food up there at the top of Pico. And it, you got to go there. That's it. All right. That's it. I've taken, I've taken the note. Yeah. And for it. everyone listening, too, if you happen yes. to be in the Santa Monica area, go to Gilbert's. Yep. For some it. authentic Mexican food. That's where you got to go. That's the place to be. That's my favorite type of food. So I'm glad Is you, it really? I'm, right. I'm glad you, you said that. <laughs> yep. You let me know. We'll take you up there. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be so much yeah. fun. Yeah. Well, I kind of want to go back to, I guess, the other half of your career uh, okay. on the beach side and playing in the the four the four women pro beach tour. Tell me about that experience. That was in the was that the early nineties, mid nineties. Tell me about that experience playing in that in that beach tour. Unbelievable! I'll tell you. You know, I was so lucky because right after the Olympics, they created this uh, pro beach tour, this Bud Light four person. And it was right after I was done with the indoor. And they said, hey, you want to be a captain for Team Paul Mitchell uh, Professional Beach? Sure. Yeah, why not? So uh, I did that for about five years and uh, played four or five years with the Pro Beach Tour. And it was amazing. It was so much fun. Team Paul Mitchell took the greatest care of our team. And uh, we traveled with a bunch of other, like four other teams. I think there were five teams in the league. And we would just travel to different venues. And we played against um, some really, really great athletes, Elaine Youngs. Uh, wow. uh, yeah. And then on the men's side, there was Eric, of course, Gary, Scott Fortune, Doug Partee, um, and some of those, Natalie Williams, Elaine Youngs, I had mentioned, um, Kim Odin. Um, so we were playing against some wow. really good athletes. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? So it was super fun. It was super fun. We had a great time touring and traveling with the uh, with the athletes and and the crew the setup crew and uh we just had good camaraderie good support and uh you know a lot of stories we don't really talk about too much but um <laughs> you know it was fun super fun yeah. yeah yeah with the you know the the beach itself being a very party party environment uh those events uh i i should say uh beach pro pro, pro tour events I'm sure there's some stories that that can't be told <laughs> right? as well, but I'm sure it was such a fun time, especially at that time when it, it seemed like beach was just exploding and, you know, it was standing room only around those courts. And yeah, yeah what a, could you could you speak to the atmosphere of those type of events just with like, you know, with all it, the people around? Awesome. Yeah, it was so fun because they had one court and then they we'd play you know, against each other. And then they had a full set, a full stadium, like a little mini stadium and they pack in, they had a player's tent. It was like a little mini AVP, you know, they have the, the player's yeah. tent and they had the stadium and then the center court. And uh, it was just packed. It was free. People could come in and uh, it was just jam packed. They had music going. They had um, an MC. I can't remember who, who was the MC at that time. Do you remember? It was so I don't ago. think so. I don't think so. Was it Sam Lagana or, oh, no, you know who it was? Oh, wait, I can't remember the name right now. I'll have to get back to you with that name. But, uh, yeah, I might have to text Eric and ask him who was the MC for the Bud Light. 
Gosh, that's so, it's just so cool that they had that setup too. Oh, for, total setup. Yeah. For that, for that pro tour. And just uh, where you, you mentioned you traveled as well. Where were some of the, was it all around the U.S. or like where were some of your favorite spots? That you uh, went to? Seal Beach. We went not too far. Seal Beach. And then we'd go to Chicago. Okay. And yeah, uh, yeah so we went all over and, and it was super fun. New York. Um, oh, cool. I know it was it was so long ago. I can't even remember some of the places, but we would just fly out, stay over, play the tournament and then uh, play and then fly back out. You mentioned you were uh, a captain. Was that right? Yes. What what was your role as as captain for for the picking the team? Okay, that's about it. Strategy helping coach. But we always had a coach with us. You know, we'd hire a coach to help us. And um, that's about it. Just or getting everything organized, making sure people had their stuff. And that's about it. Getting the uniforms and, you know, just kind of like managing nothing super critical. (laughs) Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, you talked, I mean, you talked a little bit about the atmosphere, the scope of the event. What were some of your other favorite memories that you kind of look back on during, uh, while competing on the pro tour? Um, I think the the team meals at night, we'd go out with the sponsors and we'd always go to the, the, the most delicious restaurants and eat and have fun. And sometimes we'd go with other teams and just the camaraderie, you know, it was fun. It wasn't super, uh, uptight or anything it was really competitive but it was really fun yeah that's what i remember it's just being super fun hanging out with everybody and plus my brothers were there so that was fun too that's a bonus yeah. yep that's cool yeah super bonus um well i have to ask i, I we have we i think we always ask every indoor and beach athlete what what is what's what do you prefer indoor or beach i like them both <laughs> i do Honestly, yep. um, I like them, but I like beach volleyball because you got to be able to do all the skills. You got to pass, set, hit, run around, play defense um, and indoor. It, you could do you can get away with doing a little bit of stuff. But um, I, I think uh, I like both. And I think people, young people especially, should play both if if they like to, if they want to. Yeah, I encourage great, great our answer. high school. Yeah, I encourage our high school girls to play beach and indoor because a lot of them play club, and uh, I, I encourage them to to play beach also. Yeah, I mean it's they're only going to help each other. In yeah, my opinion, the, the skills kind of go with both. Um, but like you mentioned, in beach you got to do it all. So then, yes. that that's only going to help your indoor game too when you go to your specific position. No doubt. No That's doubt. awesome. Well, yeah. I, I just wanted to also congratulate you on being inducted into the USA Volleyball Hall of Fame this past May. Congratulations. That's Thank awesome. You. I appreciate that. Thank Looks you. like you had a lot of family out there with you too to celebrate. Um, of course, the you know, what is the honor of being the all time great female indoor athlete? What does that honor mean to you and mean to your family? I was shocked. Honestly, I couldn't even believe they remembered me. It, it, it just seemed like I played so long ago, seriously. And um, it, it was amazing. It was an amazing honor. And I was so excited to to be there. Um, It's just super cool to be recognized by USA Volleyball as one of the all-time greatest indoor players. I mean, with, well, along with the other names who, who have received this award, uh, Linda Murphy, Kim Odin, uh, let's see who else. Um, I had a oh Patty Bright, who was my high school coach. Oh, that's uh, cool. Which was incredible. I mean, how about this? So Patty Bright was my high school coach, and her daughter Bonnie was on my team also. Bonnie Bright. And then when I got to be a coach here at Santa Monica High School, my daughter was on my team. Uh, Blossom is her name. But uh, so that was kind of like a a full circle moment for me. Um, yeah, you know, Kathy Gregory. Of course, and then Karch, all all time greatest indoor players. I mean, to be on that list, amazing. I I can't even imagine. So that's it's just it's super cool. And plus, Eric, my my little brother, he got it a couple years ago. Yep, yep. That was super awesome. So, 
yeah, really, it, it means a lot. I wasn't there, but from just from the pictures, it kind of looked like a fun volleyball reunion. Who, I guess, who were you like most excited to to run into there um, that maybe you weren't expecting to see? Oh, uh, let's see. Everyone. <laughs> Everyone, because we, we don't see each other that often. You know, yeah, everybody's yeah. busy with their lives and stuff. So just running into so many people is always uh, it's always such a good time. And, and I was excited that a, a lot of people went. My brother went. Gary went. My boss from school, my principal, Murray Cruz. So that was oh, wow. super. I know. Right. And my athletic director, Colleen Davaport, uh, they made the trip out to the Hall of Fame event from school. I know. Right. That's so cool. I, that's I that's awesome. Wow. I know. I was so excited that they went to support me. It was really it really meant a lot for everybody to go and Ruth Lewontin and Paula Weisoff went. So that was super awesome. My daughter went, Oh, and my friend Lori Okamura went, yep. um, let's see who else. Yeah. I mean, just super awesome to have the support. Oh, it sounds like you had a great time. And again, congratulations, such a well-deserved honor. And of course, just adding to the, the resume of the Sato family. <laughs> so fun. That's so, so fun. cool. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, Kind of, kind of wrapping up here, but I'd, I'd love to, you know, we've talked a lot about your career, your background. You've been around volleyball a long time. You've seen volleyball from a lot of different angles and perspectives, disciplines. What do you think has been kind of the biggest proponent uh, for gro- for the growth of volleyball uh, here in the U.S.? Um, I just think um, there are so many opportunities for everybody to play on every single level, whether you're good, medium, or advanced, there you can play on the grass, you can play on the beach, and people are realizing, you know, and creating leagues and organizations and and a million different clubs and adult leagues and peewee leagues and and of course beach collegiate, right? How yep. awesome is that? And more schools are creating uh programs. So I just think there's a ton a ton more opportunities that people are just creating all these um, venues and opportunities for, for kids to play peewees adults. Yeah. So I think just um, people creating all these different leagues and, and realizing that you can play, you know, anybody really can play. Um, That's really just all levels. It's free. So a lot of them are free. Some of them are not, you know, but um just get out there and play. That's my big thing. You know, my blo- my daughter Blossom, she started at USYVL. I don't know if you guys have heard of that. Uh, the U- I don't the think I'm familiar with that. Okay. Yeah, but they're volunteer. So I thought, oh, well, I'm at school. I can't really, uh, uh, I was working. I said, I'm going to just sign her up for USYVL. My friends had started this uh, group. And then, of course, I volunteer my dad and my brother, Glenn, to, to be the coaches. So I said, yeah, that, that'll work. That'll work. <laughs> let's, let's get her in the, in the USYBL. So they were uh, huge. Yeah, they're getting, they're growing now. So. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, and great to hear. Yeah. Literally grassroots, right? <laughs> yeah, totally. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. so good. Uh, you kind of touched on it a little bit there, but, you know, if you run into, you know, a kid or parents who maybe are interested in volleyball but not sure, like, you know, if it's for them, why? What's your pitch on why a kid should play volleyball? Uh, well, why not? Yep. I mean, really, all they have to do is get a ball, and it doesn't even have to be a volleyball. I mean, it, it's probably better if it is, but um, just get out there and rally around. Find a pal. Find a wall. Just, I mean, you're going to meet so many people, and you're going to have so much fun doing it. You know, just get out there and play. It's it's fun and, and anybody can do it. That's that's my big thing. Just try it. Find some other pals to play with or go find a wall if you don't have any pals. You know? That's that's it. awesome. Thank it. you. Yeah. Thank yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's that's it's that's exactly right. Why not? Just try it. Yeah, I mean, and the thing is, it doesn't even have to be volleyball. It could be baseball, it could be softball, it could be tetherball, hopscotch. I don't care. Just go do something. Rollerblading. Like, there you go. That's it. 
It all yeah, right. comes back to rollerblading. That's, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Leanne, thank you so much for this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for taking mm-hmm. the time to yeah. to sit down with me and chat. Uh, it's been great to get to know you a little bit. I'm I'm looking forward to to seeing you around at some events, hopefully down the road or or next time when I'm in Santa Monica or go hit up Gilbert's uh, right. and have some Mexican food. Yep, no doubt. I'll, I'll bring Gary along too. He loves That'll be Gilbert's. fun. That'll yeah. be fun. No yeah. Well, thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Yeah. I had a great time. It was, it was there... great to meet all you guys. Yeah. Is there anything else that you'd like to share or talk about before we kind of let you go and say bye here? No, I think we pretty much covered it all. I'm just, you know, super grateful for what volleyball has given back to me and and provided opportunities and experiences. And it's just been amazing. It's been an amazing journey for me. And well, I know. Family, I yes, yes. It's 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 been good for your family for sure. <laughs> um. I know, I know Sato Volleyball has a big Instagram presence. Uh, I know this because I run social media and they like all of our posts. Thank you so much for, for doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that might be Eric. Eric. Is that Eric who runs that? That might okay. be Eric, Sato Volleyball. I do yeah. that, yeah. We have Stamble High Volleyball, Sato Volleyball, and uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's that was my next yeah. question. Where can people uh, find you, follow you on social media, or, or reach out to you if they have any questions about you know, whatever, volleyball or, or your background or anything like that. Yeah, just um, probably Samuel High Volleyball or Sato Volleyball. Just, yep, that's it. That's it. Awesome. Well, yeah. Leanne, thank you so much for, for chatting. This has been a lot of fun and we'll let yeah. you go home. We'll let you leave school and go home and rest. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much and uh, All right. I'll talk to you soon, I'm sure. All right. Hit me up when you come to Santa Monica. I will. I will definitely do that. (laughs) Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye, you guys. Thank you. Bye. Such a fun conversation with Leanne. Thank you so much for for taking the time to sit down with us. I I look forward to meeting you in person at an event. I hopefully, hopefully that soon. And I'm going to, I'm going to hold her to it. Next time I'm in Santa Monica, we're going to Gilbert's for, for some Mexican food. And maybe we'll, maybe we'll throw on the rollerblades too. We'll see. (laughs) But uh, she plugged her social media in there. Uh, you can follow her, ask her some coaching questions. Uh, again, thank you, Sato Volleyball. Thank you, Eric Sato, for liking every Instagram post I get out there. It's 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 fun to see that name kind of come across uh, on those posts, and and I appreciate the support. So thank you again. But let's move on to some upcoming events. We have the 2023 NTDP Indoor Summer Training Series in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, July 12th through the 17th. We have the 2023 USA Volleyball All-Star Championship in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, July 19th through the 23rd. Uh, Over on the beach side, we have the 2023 USA Volleyball Beach National Championship in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, July 17th through the 23rd. Congratulations to the winners of the U.S. Beach Club Championship uh, in partnership with ABP. Over on to the pro side of things. Uh, Again, at the top, we mentioned the 2023 FIVB Women's Volleyball Nations League final round will take place at College Park Center in Arlington, Texas, July 12th through the 16th. And we have the 2023 FIVB Men's Volleyball Nations League final round in Poland, July 19th through the 23rd. You can watch... Both of those events uh, on volleyballworld.tv. Don't miss the action. And really quick, wanted to mention the U.S. We were getting a lot of kind of a lot of flack on social media for you know during the U.S. Uh, men's U21 event going on right now. The team is new. The team is young. Uh, they're they're definitely struggling a little bit, but they're playing against some st- some tough competition. Uh, some some teams that have been playing together for at a forever from from a young age. So the team is still learning to play with each other. Of course, they're all young college kids that are kind of all spread out and haven't experienced playing with each other. So they're still figuring out. So everyone on social media, everyone uh, in those comment sections, be nice, be nice, give them some words of encouragement. 
um, they're doing their best and and they're only going to get better from here as as athletes as they continue to grow in the USA pipeline. So really would appreciate uh, some encouragement there. But wrapping up here, remember, listeners, you can rate and review, share with friends, family, teammates. It really helps this podcast grow and reach new listeners. And check out our video episodes on our website and YouTube. We thank you so much for your continued support. Do you know a club that should be featured or a story you'd like us to share? You can email us at the USAB show at USAB.org. Leave us feedback. Let us know how we're doing. Let us know about any future topics that you'd like to hear about or that you'd like us to discuss on the podcast. Remember, new episodes drop every other week. And until next time, thank you so much for listening to the USA Volleyball Show, the official podcast of USA Volleyball. This has been the USA Volleyball Show with Clarence Hughes and Stephen Munson, produced by Curtis Ward. Our content producer is Lara Fawcett. Our marketing lead is Bree Jaycox. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to rate and review. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the USA Volleyball Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts.